Returning to determine supremacy in the lightweight division, Jewel Scott has everything to gain in a matchup against Robert Trujillo that will have all fight fans watching from the first lap to the last, proudly representing the ninth ward of New Orleans. 38-year-old Jewel Scott proved that age ain't nothing but a number, as he impressively defeated Anthony Green and Andrew Provost on his way to tonight's showdown with Robert Trujillo. An unbeaten MMA fighter now focusing on power slap glory, Trujillo once had a day named after him in his hometown of Bertone, New Mexico, and he expects to make his fans proud once again by delivering a victory over Scott in a bout guaranteed to produce fireworks at the apex for as long as it lasts. Coming up next, Jewel, Kid Diamond Scott, takes on Robert, the real deal Trujillo. And here is the real deal, Robert Trujillo. This guy, the best athlete in the house, a 5-0 pro MMA record. He's been the main event for every show he's been in. He's part of Walkouts, brought to you by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at KudoSacks.com. Yeah, listen, this guy, you know, he's a legit fighter, but he said that the gym where he comes from, they couldn't get him the opportunities that he needed. That's why he's made the switch to Power Slot, because he wants to get some recognition, a little fame out of this, and then hopefully end up in the UFC one day. But 5-0 is a pro, as he said. Kevin Shearer's an army chef. Not to mention, has his very own day dedicated to him back home. So he's already got a little bit of fame, but looking for even more so far in Power Slot. Lost first time out to Andy Barrera, then came back a round one KO, a vicious, devastating KO in round one, the first lap versus Anthony Green. This is the only lightweight match on the main card that KO in his last fight coming against Anthony Green in the first round. And you were right, he packs a lot of power. Let's go! Jewel Kid Diamond Scott coming in with a two and one record, and he did win the toss. And he's been studying a lot of Darius the Destroyer's matches on YouTube to get ready for this show. Yeah, I love seeing the energy that he has right now because Dan Rice spoke to him yesterday. It was right after weigh-ins. He was the last one to weigh-in. Uh, he was not feeling too great because he moved down to lightweight after competing at welterweight during the reality series. Uh, but he said, really, he's out here to, to improve upon his last outing. It really kept him up at night, so his training since has been very detail-oriented. He wants to avoid making costly and avoidable mistakes and really keeping all of his emotions at bay, at least, Michael, until it's time to celebrate, right? Well, listen, very critical of the sport. He said, listen, we're not just standing there and getting whacked. We have special techniques that allow us to dispense the energy when we are hit. We have techniques for rolling and turning the slaps and the strikes. So normally, the people that are getting slapped and knocked out easily, those are the people not using the correct techniques. So, some interesting things said there by Jim Scott. 38 years old out of New Orleans, Louisiana, Jewel Scott. Been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. The tale is brought to you by 10X. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. Jewel Scott, 8 years older, both men standing 5 feet 7 inches tall. A slight 2 inch reach advantage for the older Scott. You can see that he is a minus 280 favorite coming into this one against Trujillo, who has that 5 0, a perfect MMA record. Let's send it to a power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, the power is on. Welcome to the Apex Arena, live from the fight capital. Our first match of the evening is three rounds in the Power Slap Lightweight Division. Introducing to you first, out of the blue corner, he stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Out of Raton, New Mexico, Robert, the real deal Trujillo. And now striking out of the red corner, he stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 155 and one half pounds. Out of New Orleans, Louisiana, Jewel Kid Diamond Sky. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Chris. Winner of the coin toss and striking first is Jewel. Jewel Scott. All right, buddy. Go ahead and move up. Move your chin just over the podium like that. Okay. Stay down. Stay down. Okay. All right, buddy. Hand and count. Uh, right hand and two. Right hand and two. That means you must measure. Okay, I'll tell you your measure, and then I will count you. Okay. There you go. You're good. There you go. Jewel Scott going to be okay. slapping first. 19% right of coin toss right winners on win on the first slap. Right Let's see what happens here. Okay, Let's go. Easy. First one of the night. Got to keep those feet planted. One. Ooh. Oh, he eats it. Takes it like a champ. Third blow. No problem. Yeah, clean shot. Okay, he's gonna <laughs> Did not trouble Trujillo one little bit. Okay. Look at the slow-mo. Slow -mo. Looks great. Every time. Nope, Look up. how low stand Scott up. gets on the wind-up. A lot of guys have copied his style here. Yeah, you generate right the power three. from the you feet up through the legs okay. to the waist. Right on three. Well, let's see what major. Trujillo's got. Go. One, two. Get ready. Yeah. I mean, ooh. Yeah, that got him. It might have got him in the fair eye blow. a little bit. Fair blow. They called a fair blow, yeah. though, Michael. You saw Scott, though. He was really grimacing, waiting for that shot. You saw the face on him and the face afterwards as well. Not the most devastating shot, but, yeah, certainly hurt him. And let's take another look from the table. I haven't seen this from Jewel Scott before. It was a massive right exhale two. as okay. he was getting okay. ready to receive. Now Trujillo right on, on the two. receiving end here for round two. Okay, that is your measure. 
Again, check out this low windup. Almost One. all the way to the floor. Knocks the cotton out of the air, but Trujillo stares him in the eyes. Trujillo's got a chin. I mean, it's never a pleasant experience taking a shot, but some people can take it better than others. Because look at the power, look at the wind up. Look at the shot. Stumbled him, a couple of steps back. That first one rocked him, you're up, brother. Just a couple of mini steps. Oh, a couple of steps. Just a little step or two. All right, let's go, Rob. Trujillo, a legit MMA prospect. When I asked him about Jewel, he said he has a chin, but I feel like I have more power. He was on the show. Power slap, road to the title. They're checking out the cotton in the air to make sure it's in properly. Look at the right side of his face. Let's go, Rob. Right on three, you must measure. Right on three. Here's the measure That's going measure. on three. One, two. Ooh. Oh! oh! He's out! Oh! He's out! Conscious! He's, He's, He's out! Wow! Let's go, baby. Wow! We talked about the power from Trujillo. There it was. Undefeated professional fighter, knows how to generate power, knows how to deliver with technique, and my God, delivers the knockout shot, the first one of the night. And Jewel Scott is still down and out. Tonight's Monster Knockouts are brought to you by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast, and the real deal unleashed it right here. Look at that, right on the button. And that's where you want to land. The sweet spot, it is the jaw. I mean, look at that right through it. I'll tell you what, that was so nice. Let's take a listen to this, Dan. Two. Oh, God. I mean, that is just disgusting. Look, it's, you can see how he just tenses up the neck. Wow. We talked about the power over and over and over. His goal to fight in the UFC, he wanted to come on power slap, garner a little bit of attention, and I'd say Robert Trujillo did just that. You can see the right side of his face starting to swell up a little bit in red, but I think he's going to be just fine. I know that's back-to-back yeah, -back fight. First winner in our first match of the night. Yeah, that first one there, kind of high, that bothered, and you see the fingers kind of scraping. I think that's might have what bothered Jewel Scott. But this is definitely what bothered him. Followed through. I mean, just a beautiful technique to that slap. And look, just falls like a pendulum. Stiff as a board, out like a light. Oof. Charlie, what have we got? I'm here with the slight, very slight underdog to the man from Trinidad, Colorado. And he's wearing those shoes. Gonna be very interested to see how this affects Reese Archer. Never seen that before. Let's send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap Middleweight Division. Introducing to you first, out of the blue corner, he stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 184.5 pounds. Out of Trinidad, Colorado, tenacious Travis Aragon. Uh, uh -oh. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet tall, weighing in at 184 pounds. Out of Battle Creek, Michigan, Reese One Punch Archer. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Gary Hatley. The winner of the coin toss and striking first is Reese Archer. So Reese back Archer up, gonna go up, first. Remember, 19% of power slap matches have Archer ended Reds won the on the toss. first slap. What hand? What See if count. that happens Left here. On Both men Left with on one. mixed martial measure? arts yeah, measure. experience. Measure. Well, Reese has never been knocked out. Oh! Foul red. Foul red stepping. Stepping. Remember, he's not wearing shoes. That's going to be a point deduction. Fouls kill you. He stepped before he even threw. He's stepping all over the place. Yeah, oh, he stepped crazy. Listen, I thought straight away when you highlighted Dan, no shoes. Let me tell you, the canvas 
it can be pretty slippy. That's why people wet the canvas sometimes in mixed martial arts to get a little right, bit more red. traction from the water. One point red, Having stepping. One point red, the stepping. Shoes will help. One point red, stepping. Without question. With feet, okay. He's made a mistake there, big mistake, and he's already one point down. So what does that mean? All, all that means is that Travis Aragon, with his first slap here in the first round, he could literally just go up and give him a love tap. He's going to win the round. Now, in all likelihood, it's not going to be a love tap. Blue. No, 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 no. Count. Because you've just got slapped in the face. You want to get revenge. Measure. Oh, wow. oh. What was that? He, he tried to roll with it. They're going to call flinching. flinching that was a flinching. You want so another he gets snap? Okay. Two for flinching. So he gets to slap like, again. You want another slap? He's like, right. yeah. Okay, so what he tried to do is what yeah, fighters warning. do. He tried to roll with yeah, the slap, but he went too warning early. On the flinch. Way too early. So I spoke to some of them, and Measure. that is a technique. But you've got to be microscopic with the timing. Wow. He did it flinch. again. We're taking that. Oh, Take it. We're taking that. All right, you got to watch the flinch. Wow. One point red flinching. So one point red flinching, one point red flinching. That is a 10-7 round. Wow, so that's complete domination. Fouls are huge. All of these guys, when we talked to him, them in our fighter meetings, talked about the fact how they, they needed to get the technique down. They needed to be accurate. The first thing they wanted to focus on were clean strikes, and then they could focus on power. Because what happens is that when you're trying to land a blow with maximum power, you grit your teeth, you close your eyes, and you let the aggression take over. And that is why experienced fighters, the best fighters in the world, they're the calmest because they're not doing that. They're in control of their bodies. Researcher needs to get in control of his body. Oh. Oh. They call it stepping again. Stepping. He's a stepping son of a bitch. There's no way you can win okay. this if you're going to step every slap. Look at this. One point red. One point red stepping. Oh, I mean, that is, it's blatant. He's doing real We're damage to Aragon, but every got? single time oh, it's a foul. Right hand on one. I mean, that's four point deductions, correct? Yes. There's that many, it's hard to keep track of. I mean, try to measure. Foul, red, flinching. He rolled again. I don't understand this. That's fine. Th this is not the first time Reese Archer's okay, done this. This is his third That's slap warning. fight. Flinching. Good job, Travis. Good job. At this point, Reese Archer just needs to close his eyes and just let what will be Measure. Be. Well, yeah, he, I mean, he, he closed the eyes, but he started rolling with it too early. Red, flinching. And another yeah. flinch. This is red. unbelievable. One point That's red. One point six. red, flinching. That's it. That's six. That's I mean, just 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 call yeah. the match. That's it. That's it. That's, That's it. it. It's over. He lost. He's been disqualified. <laughs> That's too bad. I really feel, I really feel for Reese Archer, but listen, it was a strategic error not to wear shoes. Yeah, look, listen, it really was. You know, Reese Archer. We spoke to him this week. He's a very nice guy. He was here for a big opportunity. You know, he said he wants to change the world, change his life. We talked about the extremely humble beginnings where he comes from. This is a very, very disappointing night for him. On the flip side, Travis Aragon, he goes home the winner. He won this bout fair and square, but I'm sure he would have preferred to win it the good old fashioned way, if you know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're saying, Mr. Biss, being a very disappointing performance for Reese Archer, an engaging young man, very easy to root for. Yep. Travis Aragon came in and did exactly what he needs hey. to do. And he's got the moves. Hey. And I don't know if we've mentioned this yet, but he trains with Robert Trujillo, yes. who won the first fight. So these guys who train together are going to be the winners. Let's take a look at these shots. I mean, look at that Reese Archer flinching last week. I mean, come on. And it is time now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get popped with Kudo today at Kudo Snacks. Come, we send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after round number two, referee Kerry Hatley calls a stop to the match for the winner by disqualification, tenacious Travis Aaron.
Aragon. Aragon improving to one. As a plus 145 underdog to Andrew Provost, who will be going first. Justin Bernard taking away. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap Welterweight Division. Introducing to you first, out of the blue corner, he stands five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds. Out of Plattsburgh, New York, Andrew Provost. Yes. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 164 pounds. Out of Concord, North Carolina, Alex Annex Religion Asbury. Let's go, Let's go. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Andrew Provost. Now oh, you can hear the coaching already. Coming from Andrew Provost's corner, Let's go. member of Team Wolverine sure on Power Slap, road to the title. On which hand and what strike count will you be striking your opponent? Right on three. Right on three. Stand by. Keep your feet down in the box. Right on right three. Right on three. Right on Remember, three. Remember, his arm must be healed because he heard it on the show. There was rumors he was going to hit with the left. One. Two. Oh! That was a big one. That was a big one. There's nothing wrong with that hand. Called a stepping foul on Provost. To be honest, Michael, I'm a little surprised that we're seeing this many fouls. Yes. Well, it's a big occasion. It's a big event. The first ever power slap. They're fired up. They want to put their best foot forward. But you've got to keep those feet planted. You've got to come up a little for me here. A little bit more. Chin above. One step forward. Yep. One you gotta keep those feet on the ground. A little oh, rising of the heel is allowed. Alex right, Asbury is fired up. Oh, he's getting Which the crowd pumped, 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 pumped up, and he's getting me pumped up. This big guy. Right three. Keep your feet down in the box. Right three. Keep your heels down. Asbury two and one, one coming into this slap fight. And the biggest hands as well, right? Gargantula. Gargantula. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Fair. Stand, stand, stand. All right, clean shot. Fight up. Provost eats it pretty well. But remember, there's a foul, so that first round's going to go to Asbury. You got him good, though, and you're good. You're good, brother. On the first one, it's a stepping foul. That is a good point. Jason Herzog never took the point away, though. I know, but you didn't call it. So it's probably a 10 9. So the first round would still go to Asbury. A little surprised that they didn't take the point, but they do give warnings on occasion. Should have been a, should have been a point deduction if you ask me, but still, what's going on here? Ah, uh, yes. They're, they're discussing it right now, and they're informing Jason Herzog that that should have been an automatic point. You guys got your point? There's a one-point deduction, one-point deduction for the stepping, one-point deduction for the stepping on which hand and what count will you be striking your right opponent? On three. White, right on three. So right that's 10-8 Asbury on the be. first round. Provost needs a big one here. One, two. Let's go. Oh! oh! Down! What a comeback for Provost! He's got 10 seconds to get up. He's Let's trying. See, he's trying hard. He's I don't think he's going to make it. He's grabbing that table. I don't know. He's up. Oh, oh he's... Oh, That's no. it. Oh, it's over. That is it. Oh, oh, oh. DJ oh, Alex Religion counted out. Andrew Provost over here. Right. Look at this. With the injured hand, Andrew Provost gets it done after the foul in the first. Playing Tonight's Monster player. Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Here's another look. Perfect slap. Oh. Wait for it. I mean, look at that. The follow through, that's what gets it done. And Asbury, still conscious, but trying to get back to his feet. Just wasn't going to happen. Grabbed the hold of the table, trying to climb his way up like a boxer does with the ropes in the boxing ring. But Jason Herzog, look at this way. Boom. Oh, man. It's a lot of power. Andrew Provost doing his little Connor walk around the stage. You know, his 13-year-old son, TJ, watching at home, loving what dad did there. And you can see, he had a minor heel lift on that. That's okay. You can do that. It can't be a full pivot, can't be a full heel lift. Oh, my.
I did not expect oh. that. Also, slapping first, when we talk to Frank Holland, he says he doesn't anticipate a KO because of Dorian's size. He's going to have to outlast him in this one. We send it to our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap heavyweight division. Introducing first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, one inches tall, weighing in at 261 pounds. Out of San Isidro, California, Torian, disturbing the peace, Perez. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 250 and one half pounds. Out of Fulton, Missouri, right, the Tech Holland. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Smith. Winner of the coin toss and striking first is Dorian Perez. Wait, wait. Nice and accurate. Beat down. We're back. Beat down. Right, guys. Right. How about Mark Smith? Is this Michael? Work at the UFC event today and power slap. Congratulations oh, gonna be your to Marab Dwalashvili getting yes. a huge win over Pierre. Right hand on three. You Mark Smith measure. used to be a fighter jet pilot, okay? Referee in two events is nothing. Here we go. One. Two. Ooh. Oh, he stumbled the tank. Oh, oh. Serious power. Look at that. It's all fun and games until someone gets knocked out. Defense position. Dorian Perez just slapped the shit out of it. Look at the feet here. Watch the feet. Good. Recover. Hey, count. Little bit of a step. Little bit. The, the table kind of saved him. Must measure. Measure. One, two. Foul! Foul! Call the foul. Oh, foul. flinching foul. Flinching. Perez just ate it, though, like it was nothing. Well, he was celebrating, and he got called for a foul, a so that's... He acknowledged the flinch. So a point deducted. Hand and Frank the tank. It looked like clubbing, too. I right hand on three. I don't know you that I would measure. call that flinching. That was on measure. the ear. Potential club, One, but anyway, moving on. Two. Yes. That was clean. That was clean. But don't Defense dismiss position. the fact that it was a two for one first round there. Frank the Tank got two slaps. But Dorian Perez ate them like they were He really did. I mean, I think it's clear to see. I mean, round judging off two. round one, hand Perez has a power three. advantage. Right hand on three. You must measure. Two. Oh, down yes. goes the tank! Oh, there it is, there's that power. Dorian feels it. He's at six. He's at seven. seven. He's up. He's up. He's gonna have good. to step forward. Oh, I don't know, man. Is he wobbling? Good job, Frank, let's go. He's good. Right, let's go, Frank. Minute to recover and set. 60 right, seconds. You have a minute to recover. 40 seconds to recover and, talk to your coach. and then deliver the blow. He's going to talk to his coaches. He's going to try and gather his senses and then slap him back. Let's have a look. You've got 25 oh. seconds. It's your last Defensive slap. position. Give it to him, dude. You've got this shit. Give it to him. Okay? I will tell you, Give it to him. that was close seconds. to another step you from it. Perez. He's Only lifting up that good? back heel. It was not a pivot. Huh? It's just a question of how high it, that heel lift is. He's, he's going to have to be seconds. careful. Let's go. He's got look at this. Nine seconds to deliver that slap. He better go. Oh, we call time. Oh, okay, he's gonna get checked okay. out. All right. Fight it's done. That's it. That's it. Fight's he, off. He hadn't recovered in time, yeah. but the clock was winding down. I don't know if he would have got a slap off. Yeah, the boxer didn't like what he was seeing there. Get him out there. Stand by. Stand by. The doctor didn't like it either. That was that. Safety first. Let him right here. Catch him Wrap around my shoulder. So Dorian disturbing the peace. Perez improves to three and zero. Oh. Tonight's monster knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Here's another look. Frank the Tank goes down in his 20th professional slap fight. Looked like he was trying to recover, just couldn't fully get there. I mean, listen, he wanted to. You know, but I'm not surprised, to be honest, the power that Dorian Perez generates with all slaps in round one and in round two. I mean, Frank the Tank Holland, listen, he can take a shot. He's been doing this for a while, but he's only human when it's all said and done. I mean, and look at that. 
climbed back to his feet, all heart. Referee and the doctor had to step in to save him from himself. But Dorian Perez, that man hits like a truck. Dorian Perez, as the fans look on, <laughs> I'm telling you, watching this live really is unbelievable. He's a huge... Small business from the time he stepped into the power slot competition and nothing has changed for the Hawaiian as he approaches a pivotal matchup against Isaiah Quinones tonight. A proud Hawaiian now making his home in Texas, Russell Rivero embraces the Just Scrap philosophy embodied by all the top fighters from his island. And after making an impression on power slot fans, both in competition and the house, all eyes will be on him when he faces Isaiah Quinones. An upset loss to Nikolai Salkochi took Quinones out of the running for the first ever light heavyweight title. But with the experience gained from that fight and his unbeaten run on the regional scene, the Californian is ready to start his journey to the top tonight. Coming up next, Russell Kainoa Rivera takes on Isaiah Puerto Rican Free Boy, Quinones. Isaiah Quinones, a plus 200 dog coming into this one. Oh, and one in power slap. He was KO'd by Nikolai Salkochi last November, so he's been looking forward to getting back out there to the power slap table and uh, chase things around this little bit. Yeah, and he's got a lot of experience with slapping people's faces and other promotions. 32 years old, I said, what do you do for a living? He said, I work a spaceship. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on, come back. What are you talking about? I said, yeah, I'm an avionics engineer for Virgin Galactic. This man literally is working on spaceships. A very, very smart man. As you mentioned last time out, got knocked out. Round one, Nikolai Salkochi. He took a big shot, but look at this man. Very well built, quite the athlete, very strong, but he has got a very tough match up here tonight. The blue corner, four and oh, so far tonight. Perhaps that goes well for Kinyonis. Russell, Kainoa, Rivera won the toss. Coming to this one is a minus 260 favorite. These fighter walkouts brought to you by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at KudoStacks.com. This guy, Russell Rivera, he's a fat man. He's got massive power, let me tell you. Works as a commercial electrician during the week. A very hard working man. Just 56 hours a week. Then he goes straight to the gym. Focuses on weight training, as you can see when you look at the build. Bench is 420 pounds. So, uh, clearly, a very strong guy. Generating a lot of power. And he was uh, supposed to go up against Kenyon once before in another promotion. So, listen, this is all business. I actually like the guy. But we're here to slap each other. Maybe the best man win. But Rivera coming into this extremely comfortable. His day job is working as an electrician. They work to help build out a data center. He said he drives an hour to work, has a 10-hour shift, drives an hour home, and then lifts weights. So we have all day, each and every day for Russell Rivera. The tale of the tape brought to you by 10X Tennis. You can visit the tax rate from 10 What year separates these two men in age? One inch as well, and the reach identical. 70 inches for both men, but Russell Rivera coming into this one is the minus 260 favorite, winning the toss, and going first. Justin Bernard, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, this next match is three rounds in the Power Slap Light Heavyweight Division. Introducing to you first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, ten inches tall, weighing in at 201 pounds. Out of Lancaster, California, Isaiah Pretty Boy King Come on, man. Yeah. And now, striking out of the red corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 201 pounds. Buddy, out of Fort Worth, Texas, Russell Kainoa Rivera. You are in charge of the action, Chris Tyone. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Russell Rivera. All right, we hey, said this a little bit earlier. 19% of the coin toss winners have any things on the first slap. A little bit more. We okay. talked about the strength right of Russell there, Rivero. Bench is 420 okay. pounds. Standing count, please. Has yet to win in power right slap, hand however. You must yeah. the first time okay. out, he actually right got a knockout, three. but it was an illegal blow. So he's got to focus on following Stay the rules, still. not just landing with power. Yep. Because he's got the power. One. Don't move him. Two. Here we go. Oh, oh. Look at that. Flinching! 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 Flinching foul call oh. on Quinones. That means he's got to take another one. Indeed. First step oh. in. Is there a worst foul in sports? No, 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 no. Okay, there was a foul on both fighters. Oh, both There was a foul in. on both fighters. Flinching <laughs> takes precedence. That is a warning, okay? So does he still get slapped? Another slap. Oh, he does. Okay. They should cancel each other out. You know what I mean? If your opponent fouls as well, you should be like, well, hold on. You don't get to slap me again. But those are the rules. Right now, Russell Rivero gets and another come. free shot at the pretty boy Kinyonis. Right on three, you must measure. Two okay, right for flinching. Three. Hold on. Uh, okay, bud. Stay right there, please, okay? Right on three. That is your measure. Don't flinch, Isaiah. Here's the second slap of the Don't first round. Uh -oh. Two. Oh! And he's back up straight away. Straight away. Not messing around. Stand he's still shaking, still. though. Oh, no, but look at him. He's firm. Well, let's he's not see. wobbling. Eyes a little watery. Yeah, he's 60 right. second recovery clock. Okay, we've got a foul. Stepping. Oh, one oh another point. stepping foul. One point loses a point One there. One point stepping. 
One point stepping. Okay. Here's the Watch feet again. Those. We've seen this a lot. Feet. Oh, yeah. a complete pivot. That was bad. He picked up the left foot and had a full pivot with the right. You're good. You're good. You look good, brother. So the crazy thing here is, Michael, that had Quinones not gotten up, he would have won. Stay right here. Correct to Mundo. We've seen that before. Right yep, yep. Set, don't move. In power okay. slap. We've also seen that in the UFC. But Isaiah Quinones, he's a real man. He doesn't want to lose on a technicality. He wants to land a knockout blow. They came for a fair fight, but that is a point deduction. So by my math, that would be a 9-9 nine -nine round. Yeah, just a little, right there. It was a warning for the flinch. If he can land a clean strike, it would be a 10-8 round. And in regards to Quinones to steal one of the greatest calls of all time from our buddy, John Anik, that is not the cloth from which he is cut. Isaiah Quinones taking his time as we have 51 seconds on the clock. You're all right. Don't listen to these guys. Listen to me. Got 45 still, 45. These are long seconds. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. You feel it? But he's going to take his time, get his wits about him. All right, there you yeah, go, why baby. Not? Ryan Phillips, one of the top five heavyweights in power slap in his corner. Really good coach. Let's go. Okay, you must measure. Okay, I'll count your measure and your warm-up. It was great advice from Phillips. You get two right on three. minutes when that you've been fouled. Measure. And here he goes. That's all you need. Let it go. One. Two. Here we go. Oh, that was a nice one. Fair blow. Fair blow. Took a couple of steps backward. And that's a 10-8 round for Quinones. Okay, you got 40 seconds. Line up. Yes, yeah, see, look. Look at the feet. The heel came up just ever so slightly on the right foot. But that's allowed. When you over-accentuate, when you clearly pivot like you would throwing a straight right in boxing or a hook, that's when you lose the point. Now, 25 seconds. Rivera's got to be quick. He's got to get a yeah. move on. I hope he's looking at the clock, which he did. Just glance up at the clock. He's, he's got 15 seconds. He's waiting a little bit too long, in my he's opinion. Got oh, got he better go on one. All right, he steps in with 10 seconds to go. Oh, he knows what he's doing here. Right on three, five seconds. One. Two. Oh! Quinones eats it. He just beats the buzzer, but Rivera was well aware of the time, knew exactly what was going on. That was, that, that was very close to finish, so be careful. That was an eye shot. Chris Tagnoni giving Quinones a warning, saying he was very close to flinching. He said, yeah, you want to try standing here and get smacked in the face. Yeah, it was close to flinching, but I didn't flinch. So shut up, OK? I just got the shit slapped out of me. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really see the flinch. flinching. He has massive traps and really no neck, so the traps were sticking out. I don't feel like he really tucked his chin very much. like, that was close to flinching. He's like, yeah, I know. That is your measure. That is your measure. One. Fast two, hands for Kionis. Go. Oh, yeah. Rivero shakes it off. Flinching! Foul! You moved. So, you moved. when we talked to Rivero, right he, he almost, instead of again, moving away, he almost moves into the slap. Okay. Which right right actually okay, that's increases a foul on the flinching. power. That is a warning, okay? Which he seems kind of counterintuitive. Step in the box, please. 100%. Okay. Stay right but watch there. this. Stay still. Okay, don't move. Yeah. He, he turns the Stay cheek right and here. leans the Stay head right. in. Okay, if go. only he turned the other cheek. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Well, I don't think you've okay, ever done that. Set. I've okay. never done that. No, you... Stay set, okay? Hand and kill. Right on three. You must measure. Quinones gets a second shot measure. here in the second round. One, two. Russell Fair Rivera blow. just chews on that one. Yeah, you know what I'm noticing? A lot of the time in mixed martial arts, when you land a low kick and it's a slap sound, it sounds good, but it doesn't do that much damage. It's the low kicks that make a thud that really have the bigger impact. 
And I kind of feel it's a similar thing because a lot of the time when you see the knockout blows, you don't get that big slap sound. It's more the thuds. Right on three. And remember what right Rivera said. He's working on dipping from the waist. He wants to throw it like a hook. And he wants to almost cup their face. He's not looking for that big sound. He's looking for the power in the hand. One. He just, oh, that's, that's it, no that's, it. That's, that's it, that's it, that's it. He did the stanky leg. Russell Cano Rivero. His first power slap win. He was likely down 2017 because of fouls. What a tremendous comeback win on the biggest night of his slapping life. Oh, I mean, what a final shot that was. Fair play to I Isaiah Quinones. Tried his best, got back to his feet, fought like a warrior, but the referee called it off. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast, and there it was from Kainoa. Oh. He he talked about that. Look how the, it, yep. the hands almost cupped a little bit. He did exactly what he told us he was going to do. That's and precisely what he said he was going to do. And bend the arm just a little bit. Bend the arm a bit, oh. cup the hands. Join, oh, man, that sound is brutal. Cup the hands a little bit, accentuate the palm connecting. Of course, you've got to be careful. You don't want to club them. Listen. When you look at these guys like Russell Rivero, I mean, he's shaped like a martini glass. He benches 420 pounds. He lifts weights six days a week. It doesn't always translate no. into power at the power slap. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Out of Ontario, California, Emmanuel Nola Luniz. And when the action begins, your referee charge, Gary Hatley. Winner of the coin toss and striking first is Wesley Drain. Drain gonna go chalk up here from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Father to three kids, five to nine years old. See, so he's busy at home. Very busy man, going right on. Two. One. Oh, no love. Does a good job eating that one. Yeah, nice to see him throwing with his correct arm. Remember, last time out he threw with his left. This time hit with the right. Decent shot. Nothing earth shattering. And we were a little perplexed by that last time, but we did find out that he hurt the knee, so he felt like he couldn't yeah, on twist on that, so he had to throw with his offhand. Measure. Let's see how Mooney's answers. One. Two. Oh, he stumbled him. In style is how he answers. Waddles in big, has to hold on to the table to stay upright. I mean, that's a standing count, if you ask me. Oh, you see the palm go all the way through. Let's take let's, a listen. Yeah, let's hear this one. Oh, boy. Recovered two. Oh, oh, God. oh, that's sick. Just like a massive overhand right. Uh, I'm really impressed by the coaching of Ryan Phillips. Telling him to breathe, telling him to take his time, but you do have to be mindful of the clock. We are under 20 seconds to go now. Right on two. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to rush back Measure. into it when you just got rocked, which it clearly was. 10 seconds, though. Time to get a move on. One. Let's go, Will. Fair yeah. Blow. Fair blow. They're calling it a fair blow. It, it was almost like a little bit of like a graze. It didn't It didn't seem like he got the whole hand on there. Sounded clubbish, but it looked like Emmanuel Muniz could take them all day long. He gave a little grin right after. Let's take a look. A oh, bit of blood flew out yeah. there. Yeah. Blood from the mouth of Muniz. Right on three. Right on three. Measure. No, it was a clean blow. We just didn't uh, get the sound that we're accustomed to here at Power Slap. Maybe we One, will here. Two. Ah, look at that. 
So Wesley takes round two. Muniz unable to duplicate what he did in the first round. Looks like that was more fingers. It didn't land as flush as he wanted it to. According to the odds, We're Michael, good, baby. this was expected to be the closest Money's fight the on the card. Right. Drain minus 110, Mooney's coming in minus 120. Here comes Drain in round three. Right on two. I was concerned right for two. Drain Measure. though. After round one, getting rocked the way that he was, the accumulative effect of the blows adds up. But he took that one very well. One. Oh. Fair blow. I love how Muniz so just kind of bounces back, shit, okay? makes eye contact before he walks away from the table. And straight away over to his coach. Straight away, maximize the 60 seconds. 44 seconds. I mean, he takes a big shot here, eats it well, good gamesmanship, doesn't let on, doesn't let his opponent know that he's hurt, right that he's injured. Red, doesn't right give him that three. psychological advantage. Measure. And as we see here, neck and neck, my scorecard going into this one. One. So, this could decide Two. the fight. Fair blow. Oh, wow. Fair blow. I mean, that was a, that's a tough one to score. That is a yeah. tough one. It is. That's it. Both with decent blows, both fair, decent accuracy. Don't tell me you're going to go with. Go with what? You can't go with a draw. Good job, Can man. you? <laughs> you cannot. Let's hang over here a little bit. Yeah. Well, hey, that was, according to the odds, the most evenly matched slap yep, fight yep. on the card, and that's exactly what we got. First decision of the night, correct? It's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know what to do with myself. We haven't had any decisions thus far. <laughs> you better take me. Wesley Drain coming in one and three. We talked about some of the issues he had. First match was a disqualification because of fouls. We've seen some of the foul issues with other slap fighters tonight. Third match, he had an injured knee, so he's slapping with his off hand. Manuel Muniz coming into this one two and one. And it is a rematch. That last fight was a win over Muniz. So you're giving this one. Yeah, I mean, look, listen. To drain. They're very close, but rounds two and three, I think Wesley landed the better shots. You know, Muniz took them well, some nice gamesmanship, but you know, listen, it's close, very close. But if I got to pick a winner, I give it to Wesley Drain. I think he takes this one. Going to the scorecards for the first time tonight. We're waiting for the judges' scores to be tallied as we take a look at the super slow-mo replays. This stuff never gets old. Wesley Drain and Emmanuel Muniz going back and forth the first time tonight. We have gone to the judges' scorecards. A slight step back for Muniz, and he comes oh. right back. And that was more of a grazing blow. It always looks a lot worse in super slow-mo. It always does in super slow-mo, but in real time, it hurts way more. But look at that. That's a solid shot. You see the blood go flying from the mouth of Muniz. And now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Senator to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Judge Diamato scores the contest 29-28, Muniz. Judge Montalvo scores it 29-28, Drain. And Judge Bird scores it 29-28 for the winner by split decision, Wesley. All the smoke, Drain. There it is. How about I mean, you, man? You have a huge uh, reach advantage. Slap Jesus coming in this one with a 4-1 record and three knockouts. Justin Bernard, we send it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap welterweight division. Introducing first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 165 and one half pounds. Out of Payson, Arizona, Waylon Ice Cold yeah. Frost. Yeah. And now, striking out of the red corner. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 161 and one half pounds. Out of Lake Tahoe, California, Michael Slap Jesus Smith. And when the action begins, the referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Michael Smith. Look at some of the props to watch. Will there be a knockout in the first round? Plus 160, yes. Minus 200, no. Michael Smith does.
Jets have one first round knockout on his resume, and don't blink because he goes quick. He doesn't mess around once he steps in the box. Yeah, that's right. You know, listen, as we said, as a character. You know, he's fun and games. Right little, one. Whatever right word you want to call him, when it comes right to this, one. he's all business. He right delivers fast, one. hard, powerful shots. Look at him. Right on one. Just a performer. When you're ready. He's going to. The clock starts when you go. He, yeah. he, he, You're ready. He's waiting for the clock to start. It doesn't run on the first strike. Oh, Waylon wow. Frost is about to get baptized by Slap Jesus. We'll see if that comes to fruition, but he's certainly trying to get the crowd riled up. Devin Schwan in the box. In the audience. Right on one. Right on one. He landed a good one. It could have been a flinch. It looked like Waylon turned a little early. Let's I mean, he see. didn't like it regardless. Look at that, shaking it off, rubbing his face. Oh, oh yeah. that's a flinch. That's a flinch. Not the worst flinch we've seen, but they didn't call it just a little bit. They do have a review official, just like in the UFC here, but... Waylon Frost is hoping that they don't check it out. But if you ask me, that was a flinch, that was a foul. You see the replay, you can see him swaying the whole upper body. As of right now, no flinch has been called. All right. Waylon Frost, now the striker here in the first round. 10 seconds on the clock. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. You got 10 seconds, he's good. Five seconds. One, two. Oh, 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 oh. Slap Jesus stays on the feet, but the hair flying all over the place. Now, keep in mind, for the judges, when they're judging this, it's the blow, and it's how the blow is received as well. If you ask me, I'm giving that to Waylon Frost. Yep. I think you're right. Talk. You got 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I think seconds. you're right. It's amazing how calm, cool, and collected Slap seconds, Jesus okay? looked there when he was receiving the blow. It's you're almost good. like, eh. Yeah. But that rocked him. Yeah, without question. Stand by, stand good by. blow, but he's fine. What count and which hand? Right on one. Right on one. Right on one. 12 seconds. Right on one again. Oh. Well, the first does not like that one little bit. Breathe, breathe in and out. So, breathe in and out. Fair blow. 50 seconds, 50 seconds. Waylon has a different seconds. philosophy for receiving the slap. How are we doing? Yeah. He turns and almost walks away immediately after. Before you do your strike. Yeah, yeah. And 40 seconds. Absolutely right. Part, 40 seconds. part of the idea is staying in the box. 100% stay there, show your opponent you can take it, look him in the eye, wink at him, blow a kiss, laugh, smile, whatever you want. Don't turn around walking away, shaking your head in apparent agony. Lots of power. Yeah. All right, 20 seconds. Let's go up there. Let's go up there. A lot of power, okay? A lot of power. What count and which hand? Right on three. That was seconds. Ryan right Phillips coaching three. in the blue yeah. corner, talking about the power. One, two. Oh. Uh, he's, oh. Had to grab the podium. It, it's hard to tell with Slap Jesus when he's really stunned and when he's not. I don't know. I, he but looked pretty stunned. He was holding on to that table. I think that's a 10-9 again for Waylon Frost. All right, so you have it. 10-9, 10-9, scoring both rounds for Waylon Frost. You got 35 seconds. 30 seconds. You know, I don't know, actually, because... You got 30 <laughs> let's remember, seconds. Waylon Frost hey. turned around and walked away. Toes is clean, okay? You got 20 clean. seconds. 20 that seconds. That was very close to a club. He was using the base of that hand on the strike. I'm going to give Jesus round one, Waylon Frost round two, neck and neck. All right. Going into round That's three. That's how we like it, Bisping. To play for. He comes quick. Jesus. Great there, job. There is a method to the He's madness good. Good. for Waylon Frost. This is good. It's, it's yeah. cool. it, look at this. Yeah.
This is it. Is right this here, not brother. a flinch? That's this. a flinch. Oh, wow. I wouldn't say you're down, but let's think you're He's down. He's rolling okay? with yeah. it early. As as a lot of these guys have talked about got, trying buddy. to do that. Very difficult to time. And he's getting away with it right now. He's getting away with it. Yeah, but that's a flinch all day. Yeah. If they're not looking at yeah. that yeah. from that angle, you cannot <laughs> deny that was a flinch. I'm sorry, Mr. Frost, but. Uh, according to your scorecard, right if Waylon Frost right wins this three. round, he wins the fight. Well, no, I've got it neck and neck. I oh, you do? have the right to alter my scorecard. Oh, well, you can't alter it. Well, too late, I did. I'm not a real judge, Dan Helly. He do knocks the, the cotton out of his ear, but it doesn't appear to stun Slap Jesus. I give Slap Jesus that round. Fair blow. I agree with you. He took that well. He smiled at him. The gamesmanship was there. Waylon Frost giving the red corner a hug. That's his buddy, Donovan Cross, who got him into the sport. Going to be interesting to see how the judges way. score this card. The one thing that I had an issue with with Waylon Frost was he rolled a little too early. That's yep. technically flinching. He also would step out of the box right away. Correct. Correct. It, it, the rolling, the flinching, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't called, though, by the referee, though. So even though we saw it, it can't affect the scorecard. True. But here's Slap Jesus going on one. I still don't like that technique. There's a nice counter from Waylon Frost. Slap Jesus took that round, if you ask me. Very close, though. Here's round two. Slap Jesus once again. Good blow. But I feel that the, the return from Waylon Frost here, I mean, that was a weird strike, kind of a club, but the hair going everywhere. I give it to Frost. And this is the winning blow and a potential foul as well from Waylon Frost. The return just wasn't very good from Whalen. And Jesus, the way he stood there, the way he took it, wait for the smile right now, didn't go nowhere. It's a close one, but I got slapped Jesus. Michael Smith winning by a decision. All right, let's see if the judges line up with you once again. So far, you are one for one on the decisions, one Michael for one. Bisbee. I know. And. Now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Justin Bernard, our power slap announcer, making it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Judge Cheatham scores it 29-28, Frost. Judge Miglior scores it 29-28, Smith. And Judge Camigio scores it 30-27, for the winner by split decision, Waylon Ice Cold Frost. It matters in the judges' hands, so don't blink when this one starts. This opportunity with Parasap, it's already changed my life, and it could blow up even more if people really take a chance with it. I got involved in Parasap from uh, previous events that I've been doing. I was the assistant coach on the Parasap show, mainly because I wasn't 21, so I couldn't compete. I was just there to kind of assist in the training. I just there to kind of help out with whatever Ron needed help with. It's a pretty cool concept, just being able to say, like, I helped pioneer this sport. Like, I was helping guide this sport to where it is now, especially if it blows up into something huge. Like, it'd be really nice to be able to say, yeah, I was the first assistant coach there. Or I was there when it all got started. I was in the first main event. It's just really cool to be the first in something. I definitely have more experience when it comes to this specific sport. Snapping is a whole different thing to MMA, boxing, all that. You can really mess someone up if you don't know the rules or how to really safely slap somebody in the face. It's how I'd like to put it. This fight with Wayne is very important because the winner of this fight gets a shot at the winner of Darius and Wolverine. That's basically your shot at the belt, which is a pretty big deal if you ask me. So it's really just going to come down to his chin versus my chin. And I don't think I'm losing that game. I went to Vegas with no experience, no expectations. Once I found out what it was, I realized that this could be something and this is my new dream. I live in Horno, New York, population 8,000 people. Very small town, definitely drive two minutes to miss it. My job is I'm a professional fighter and I'm a coach out of Vicious Elite Kickboxing. I have been grinding in my sports for a while, putting it all in, in the MMA world, kickboxing world, and now the slap world, really putting in the time. I got involved in Power Slap. There was this Facebook group message on the fighters page looking for pro fighters to do this new combat sport. I wrote them back, I was like, I could, I could use the money in. They flew me out and found out what it was. In my first fight uh, for Pass Lab, it was crazy, picture perfect match. I won the coin toss. I wanted to go first, so I hit first. It's over. It's over. Did not get up. It's over. He fell down, didn't get back up. It felt unreal. I remember smiling for like three hours. Jason Hurst, I raised my hand. I won in front of Dana White and just realizing everything I've worked for over the years. It became like a nice, cool moment of just like happiness. I'll be facing Damian DeBell for the number one contender spot. Winner gets a shot at the title. This fight for me is pretty awesome. He's put a name for himself in the slap world. I believe that I have more experience in the combat world and I believe all that translates to the sport. I know my abilities and I know that I could win this fight. I could get my hand raised. People will believe very soon.
Dwayne the Iron Giant Crespo won the toss, a minus 200 favorite. It has yet to lose a power slap 2-0 with a knockout. And that is a big thing, winning the toss. Of course, it means you get to go first, but if you ask Crespo, he says that Dibble, he's already lost mentally. You know, he said because he's lost the coin toss, he's so worried about the shot that Crespo's gonna deliver. And listen, we've seen it before, the man has ridiculous power, calls his shot, says stay down, you ain't gonna get back up. And he's done it in many forms. Muay Thai, mixed martial arts, bare knuckle boxing, professional boxing. There isn't a combat sport that this man hasn't turned his hand to. We're talking of hands, slapping people with those giant hands at 260 pounds. That's what he's preparing right now. Yeah, I've been active in combat sports for the last eight years. I asked him how he got his nickname, the Iron Giant. You know, he said it was kind of cool. My friends circled up around me and just started yelling out random nicknames. And uh, what said Iron Giant? So I went, well, 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 that's good. I like the Iron Giant for the man from Rochester, New York. Hails from Linden, New Jersey. That's where he grew up, living in Rochester right now. Again, wins the toss, and a minus 200 favorite is the Iron Giant, Dwayne Crespo. Damien DeBell, they call him The Bell, the youngest fighter on the card, just 21 years old, the assistant coach on the first season of Power Slap, rode the title three and one in his career, Charlie Arnold. Yeah, Damien DeBell's resume is pretty ridiculous, because listen to this, everybody. He's currently taking classes at UCF, studying for the LSAT, while at the same time, obviously, here to earn the number one contendership to the heavyweight title. He's been slap fighting for two years now. He has his eye on Darius, and speaking of his eye, DeBell plans to use the money from his win tonight to get LASIK surgery, because he also hopes to eventually start boxing as well. Yeah, that's right, because you can't compete in professional boxing with contact lenses and, of course, not with glasses on either. That wouldn't be good. So, yeah, he wants to make some money here, turn his hands to boxing. Either way, he's a big, powerful guy. The Tale of Tape brought to you by 10X, 10X Your Business, 10X Your Income, 10X Your Life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. Just 21 years old is Damien DeBell, both then 62 inches tall. And how about that massive, massive 8-inch reach advantage for DeBell? The guy has some serious, serious power. Our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap Heavyweight Division. Introducing first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 257 and one half pounds. Out of Rochester, New York, Dwayne Iron Giant Crespo. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 251 and one half pounds. Out of Ruskin, Florida, Damien the Bell to Bell. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Smith. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Dwayne Crespo. All right, gentlemen, to the center. All right, here we go. Been looking forward to this one. Our Just featured position. prelim. All right. And Damien yeah. DeBell. Striking first, hand count. Right on three. First in it's human force by a lot. Go right hand on three. First. You must measure. measure. Right on three. Look at that. He's got the hand on the face for an extended period. The time I get used to this feeling, buddy, because he's coming. Two. Look at that wind up. DeBell staring him down. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. That's how you take a shot. Grab you just look at your man. Defense, grab the stick. You just say, that was nothing. Yeah, that the best you've got. Talking, talking so, so Crespo's a powerful man. He fit, ranked fourth in the slap like mansion in terms of catchy. human force. 40 seconds. DeBell Easy ranked feet. first in human force yours. and first okay. in impact feet as down. he eats this feet one. Down. <laughs> and 21 years old. Let's mention that again. I mean, that's insane. Right hand, a very young three. man going on three. This is the first ever Measure. strike in power slap for Damien DeBell. Let's see what this big man's got. One. Big wind up. Two. Go. Oh. <laughs> Crespo instantly just shakes it off. Instantly starts, you know. Bit of shit talk. All right, so round one to Crespo. Good job. Let's give him some know. force, baby. Very let's close. Go. Yep. Let's Both go. legal shots. Look at those feet planted firmly. 30 seconds. No right. movement whatsoever. Seconds. Again, he, he was an assistant coach Recover. on the show. And that's one of the right things I really focus on. on keeping those heels measure. on the ground. Money, okay? Measure. Round two for Crespo. One. Dibble took that well. Fair blow! That was another good shot, but DeBell doesn't move. This is what I was talking about with Waylon Frost yeah, when he turns so and kind of walks from the table. This, to me, much more intimidating when you take a ball. Yeah. You don't hand. even punch. Right hand, right hand on, three. on three. Must measure. Fight down, Wayne. Measure. Keep those feet down and deliver. On three. Here comes the bell. Two. Oh! He is not getting up. 
Referee's called it off already, but I'll tell you what, a hundred seconds, he would still be on his back. The doctors are in, the officials are in. I mean, that is a serious knock. I look at the blood. The bell has oh. told, my goodness. Oh, my word. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy Unleash the Beast. The bells, the bells. Let's take a listen to that. Look at the eyes gone as well for Crespo. Oh, poor old Crespo, he's still on the, di uh, on the deck, but let's take a listen. Two. God, that is a sickening thud. Oh. That was ridiculous power, as I mentioned earlier. Number one in human force, number one in impact power, and you could see immediately. Disgusting power. Oh, look at the fan reaction. KO Chris during his time in the Power Slap House, and that led him back to Vegas for a welterweight title shot against Jesus Gaspar Diaz. My name is Jesus Gaspar. I'm fighting out of Montclair, California. Uh, out of the Inland Empire. It's an uh, hour east from Los Angeles. It's pretty bad over here. Half of the city is just like war zone. In the house, it's just me and my mom. She's just the strongest woman I know. I don't know what I'm doing without her. My mom inspires me just of how hardworking she is. I felt like I had to make it somehow. So when I saw this opportunity for power slap, I said, let's do it, man. Slapping competitions is going up, man. I want to be right in there, man. I want to blow up with it. I think if I win this power slab, uh, it's going to be a huge opportunity and very important. I think I might be able to move my mom out of this apartment. Being the last pick on the show, I showed that I wasn't going to back down. I'm not a player. I was going to ride that thing through. I'm here. Look at me now. I'm glad I did it. Jesus Gaspar, one of the fastest slap velocities of anyone in that weight class. I think this kid has a lot of potential. I've been leaving the house. I knew I had some things to work on. Uh, my flinching was the main one, so I learned from Wolverine to practice. Now, I'm preparing to prove myself in this match. I already did against your squad, but I'm ready to go. Be the first person to ever stand those shots from Chris Thomas. I think what makes me special is my chin and my will to win. This chin is made out of granite and it won't go down. When he sees that I'm gonna be the first one just, like, I didn't move, it's gonna really mess him up. I wanna tell him that, hey, you're not unstoppable, so whatever Chris has to bring me, I'm ready to eat. And I'm going to put the first loss on his record. I grew up pretty rough, you know, like, I was mad at the world. If anybody was looked at me the wrong way, or even if I heard a whisper of somebody saying that you had some problem or inkling towards me, without a doubt in my mind, I would handle right doing that. I've always known I could take a hit and give a hit. After seeing a power slap ad, I was like, I could do that easy, you know what I mean? And even watching it, I was like, man, those guys are not putting off much power. Like, I mean, it's just a slap, but I know when I'm going in there with a slap, it's going to hurt you. It's not just a slap, there's a lot of power that comes behind that. So I put my mind to it, and I was like, let's do it. This power slap trip to me was an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm a couple years out of recovery, you know, a lot of people go backwards in life, and I'm glad that this hit me in my life because this kind of set my path. I have five sons and a wife, and I believe that their future's in my hands, and they need me. I'm going to bring this to the top and show people that even though you come from nothing, you can be something. My nickname is KO Chris for a reason. Every slap I've had, I've knocked it out. I like this was thrown in my life. Honestly, God might have just made this for me, you know? And it's my time, and I'm gonna run with it. Cause I'll eat every slap, even if you set it down, I'll pick back up, you know? I've been knocked down plenty of times in my life, but I have to put this to sleep. And uh, that belt is worth more than any money in the world to me. That's my trophy. That's something I can show my kids that I worked for, and, you know, I didn't have opportunities that everybody else had in life. You know, I just, and now that I got the opportunity, I'm not gonna let somebody take it away from me. Oh. This guy is a power slap star in the making, and there is no doubt in my mind. Hey, Seuss, I don't feel like power slaps for you, but you're a good kid and all that stuff like that, but I'm gonna eat you alive, dude. Incredible. My KO! KO Chris! And I promise you, bud, you might be able to get a couple slaps off on me, but I'm putting you out. If I don't put you out, I'm putting you down over and over again, because that's my belt. It's my time. I already know it. He's done.
Jesus is a very unassuming guy, but don't be fooled by the record. It's very deceptive. He had some flinching issues early on. He fixed it at a split decision with Slap Jesus, and then he beat Jewel Scott. He also ranks in the top five in peak velocity, power, and human force. Jesus Gaspar Diaz might be the biggest underdog on the card, but he is here to make a statement tonight, and he can take a shot. All he do, all he does is win, and all he does is knock dudes out. Yeah, it's unbelievable. This man really does have freaky power. But when you look at him, you see the wind-up that he has. You see how far he pivots his butt. It's a doctor who has an injury on my shoulder, which actually makes me super flexible. And look at this. Super pumped up. All these men know this is a massive opportunity. This can change their lives. You saw that he's got five young boys. He wants to take care of them, give them the best life possible. And this is his God-given gift, knocking people out. Every time he has faced the money, he has put them to sleep. We'll be seeing another one in just a minute. 4-0 with four knockouts, all in the first or second round. You mentioned the five boys back home in Bismarck, North Dakota, watching with his wife, Megan. He's from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, moved to Bismarck to be with his wife and kids a while ago. And do you think he's pumped up or what, Bismarck? Look at this man, like a, like a wild animal, but on a technical side, put a little bit of weight on. Had to cut 16 pounds this week. I actually talked him through that, gave him some advice about soul baths, things like that. So the weight up for him was really hard. That will affect your ability to take a shot. So keep an eye on that. The Tale of Tape brought to you by 10X. 10X, your business, 10X, your income, 10X, your life, go to cardoadventures.com. Nine years older is Christopher Thomas, one inch taller, but it is a two inch reach deficit for the biggest favorite on the card tonight. Let's set it to our power slap announcer. This is five rounds for the power slap welterweight championship of the world. Introducing to you first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 169 pounds out of Montclair, Now, striking out of the red corner, he stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Out of Bismarck, North Dakota, Christopher K.O. Chris Thomas! And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Chris Tyone. Winner of the coin toss and striking first is Chris Thomas. You know, the crazy thing here is, Michael, these guys were really good friends in the slap house. And very early on, Chris Thomas told Jesus, we're going to be fighting for the title. Yep. Right there. They knew right from the start okay, that these two set. would make it here to this point. Helped each other out, coached each other a little bit. Right on three. Right on three. KO, right three. On three. KO Chris going first right, right on three. three. He's won the coin toss each and every time. Now get ready for One. some serious power. Two. Oh! 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 Terminated. Three. Four. Like an atomic bomb. Five. I don't know if he's going to get up. No, that's going to be Seven. it. Seven. He can't, he's, he's trying, no. that's no. it, no. it's done. No, no, no. no. Uh, I mean, Jesus Gaspar, he has done. such a likable kid, he really is. But the power that Chris Thomas possesses, I don't know if anyone can take it. He said he manifested winning the coin toss and he manifests first round knockouts. It happened here. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy Unleash the Beast. Manifest it? Nah, he mana slaps it. Let's take a look at this. Come on. One and done. Look at this. Here's Chris Thomas right in front of us right now. Losing his mind. Just became the first ever champ. And on the flip side, Gaspar Diaz taking a nap. What a shot. So, ha <laughs> we're seeing the victory dance. One big shot. Oh. I, I, gotta, I gotta hear this one more time. I need to hear KO Chris. One, two. Oh. I mean, that's disgusting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> look at those faces. Oh, look at these faces. Never mind them. My God. Oh, Jimmy on the end there. Looks like he's seen the ghost. Well, it was kind of cool. Without Flatwoods, I would be fucking down and out. KO Chris. Watch yourself there, Dana, putting the belt on. Going to be taking a nice, nice paycheck back to Bismarck. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> no, no, no. He's fired up, rightly so. Listen, when you get the knockout, it feels amazing. When you do it like that, first shot, one shot, you become the champ, and you're going home as a champion with a fat amount of cash in your back pocket. Yeah. 
And now for the official decision presented by Rumble, here is Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 seconds in a round number one, referee Chris Tyone calls a stop to the match for the winner by knockout and new power slap welterweight champion of the world, Christopher K.O. Chris. Asael Rodriguez. I currently live in Salem, Ohio. I'm a welder at Morgan Engineering in Lyons, Ohio. It's a blue collar job, you know, it's not, it's not a lot of easy work. You sometimes you gotta heat stuff up from anywhere to two to 500 degrees and work over top of it. You get up every day, you put those boots on and you go provide for your family. The symbolism of boots to me, uh, especially growing up, you know, my dad always had tore up boots from just long, long days, long hours, hard work. And, you know, eventually found myself in, on the same path. But these boots I have here mean a lot to me because, you know, they're the boots that I wore working two jobs, busting my ass to be able to buy my family the house they live in now. Being able to bring the belt home with me, the world to me, uh, the world to my kids, <coughs> the world to my wife. Because it's an example of hard work in many different shapes and forms can pay off, you know, in, in a multitude of ways. And everyone will see that all that hard work paid off when I've got my hand raised and I bring that belt back home to Salem, Ohio. I'm going in there with all intent to take them out. You know, as soon as I can get my hands on that belt and walk away with it, it'll be the better. I just want to show the world who Azale is. I like to party. I like to go out with friends and drink. But when it comes down to it, I'm a dog. I've always been a dog. <laughs> and uh, I just, I, I always end up showing it whenever I end up fighting. My time in the house, it started off a little bit shaky. I was just excited about being able to make it into the house. So I drank a little bit more than what I should have. It was just, uh, I think it was just a combination of just mis misinterpretations throughout the house. Because after seeing each of the episodes and, and my behavior, at first I was a little bit bummed out because that's not the character that I wanted to portray. But then now seeing it with my family, it's been a lot better to accept it. Since leaving the house, I've been focused on my strength training. I've been boxing more with my coach, just incorporating as much explosive workouts on my legs so that way when I deliver that first shot, I'm going for that knockout. Uh, this fight with Azael for the middleweight title is going to be a war. I'm super motivated to not lose to him, not just because he was a drunk, but uh, because I felt very disrespected a few times with things that he had said. In that scenario and in the game we're in, he gave me plenty of ammunition to come home and drain my ass off. I'm going to come in and show that Mexican warrior in me and, and slap the hell out of the dog. He's not working harder than me in any way, shape, or form. He should be expecting something that he hasn't felt before. I'm 100% confident that I'm going to knock John out. If I can put him away in the first off the rip, then that's what I'm going for. Bring home the middleweight title higher than ever because guess what guys? He just found out last week his wife 
Blake is pregnant with their fourth child. How cool is that? That's right, three kids, one girl, two boys, one extra one on the way, so a great way to make some money. As we saw in our little feature there, this man's had a hard life. You know, he's a blue collar, hard working, working class guy. You know, he went through a very, very tough year recently in the space of a year. He lost his mother, grandfather, mum, husband, and an auntie, as I say, in the space of a year. But very emotional talking about that for obvious reasons. But he's looking to harness all of that frustration and that anger and take it out on the face of his opponent. And look at that there. He's not even blinking. The intensity. You can feel it here. The Apex Appeal and Tape brought to you by TEDx, TEDx, your business, TEDx, your income, TEDx, your life, go to CardoAdventures.com. You can see that John Davis is the taller man and has a one-inch reach advantage. A very slight favorite at minus 120. This is one of the two closest fights on the card. Essentially a pick'em. Ozzy Al wins the coin toss. Gonna be interesting. Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is five rounds. All for the Power Slap Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, striking out of the red corner, the blue corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 182 and one half pounds. Out of Calista St. George, Grenada, Aziel El Pedro Rodriguez. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet tall, weighing in at 183 and one half pounds. Out of Salem, Ohio, John the Machine. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Kerry Hatley. The winner of the coin toss and striking first is Azael Rodriguez. Props to watch this one. Will it end in the first round? Plus 165, yes. Minus 210, say no. So this is favorite Our two. Gentleman center. Go beyond the first round. Azael Rodriguez is going to get first leg. Hand and count. Right on three. Blue, right on three. Right on three. One Seven. KO for Azael thus far. Two. Oh, look at that. Shakes it off. Fair block. Yeah. Gives him the, what is it, hang loose? Hang loose. Hang loose. There you go. Look at you. You live in California too long, bro. I know the lingo. I'm very cool. <laughs> I'm down with the kids. Whatever you want to call it. But John Davis took that like it was nothing. Aziel Rodriguez, do better yeah. next time. Right Worked on, on those right horse. Red, right on three. Didn't deliver what he said he was going to. Impact Maybe. power, big time from John Davis. Ranks fifth in the house. One. All right, the welder, Two. the machine. Oh, come on, come on. Four, four, five, six, he's up. seven. He's up, but I don't think he's away. I don't know if he's with walk it. To me. He's going to walk to him. He's a little wobbly. Oh, no, oh, oh, they're going to give him another shot. That's it. That's it. Right, that's, it. that's it. One shot. One and go. Down. Not out. Stay in. But out of this. Your middleweight champion, John Machine Davis, his wife Chelsea, and three kids couldn't be more elated than they are right now. You know, he's a very mild mannered guy. When you speak to John Davis, nice guy, humble guy. But he's an animal on stage. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy Unleash the Beast. Here's a look. I mean, poor old Aziel. I shot, didn't know what was coming. A knockout shot, that's what was coming. Look at that, the eyes roll back. Look at that right eye. Oh. Man. Look at him. Uh, look, at, look at the wind up. Oh my God, he headbutted the podium. Oh, I didn't see that. I did not see that either. That was behind the bells. That might have been the most brutal slap of the look night. At this. There, Hits there it the is. Head. Oh, boom. Let's go. Wow. I mean, that's, that's impressive power. Sheena, oh. one of the assistant coaches on Power Slap, just clean. He's a welder during the day, works on crane trolleys, grew up on an ostrich farm. That is correct. Ate ostrich eggs for breakfast. Well, all that protein paid off because... Speaking of eating, the official decision oh. brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Taylor. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Justin Bernard, the stage is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, after 24 seconds into round number one, referee Kerry Hatley calls a stop to the match for the winner by knockout and new power Let's slap go! middleweight Let's champion go! of the world. John 
the machine. Kathy delivered what Dana White called the greatest slap of all time against Amir Nuruddin, and now he wants to raise that bar even higher against knockout artist AJ Hicks. So I think a lot of my confidence comes from you know like my background getting into fights. I've been fighting since ninth grade. Grew up in a racist town, so I you know I had to I had to get tough real quick. So I guess you could say I have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder because everyone in town always told me I wasn't gonna amount to nothing. I already know I'm tough and I can take the shot. That's kind of why I wanted to see just how good I could do. To me, it's really about seeing who's the toughest. At first, you wouldn't really think that because you don't really take a slap that serious, but when you're up there and you get getting slapped, it's a whole different ballgame. It's all about really who is born tough. We set the world on fire! Oh! We set the world on fire! I don't see anybody in my weight class really giving me too much of a problem. I think I could take over the sport. Let's go! Six, head down! When I get out there, I'm looking you in your eyes. I'm just letting you know, like, I'm just here to put you down. AJ Hicks, ladies and gentlemen! I think one of the biggest questions that everybody's got about Vern is does he have a chin? One slap or three, either way, he's going out and I'm getting that belt. I'm bringing it back home to Adams. I know I'm already in Vern's head. I saw it right after I knocked out Russell. He was the first one to congratulate me. But as I shook his hand, I looked into his eyes and it was a look of, I have to fight this man next. He was scared. Well, I'm a, I'm a humble guy. I come from a small town. I uh, grew up on a farm and uh, I'm obviously a mechanic. So uh, I just enjoy helping people and uh, you know, making their life better with uh, fixing their cars. Um, I, I believe I reflect the values of uh, being from a small town. Um, if you watch my last competition, uh, I didn't hoop and holler, I didn't run around, I didn't go crazy. You know, I came in, I was very humble, and I left humble. Vern is probably one of the hardest hitting guys in the competition. I'm, I'm chasing a dream, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, I've always wanted to be at the top of the sport, and I've always been here, close, there, and now I have the ability to get on top. The fight for Vern Major. That is the fight of the finale. When, when it comes, and I look him in the face, He's gonna know that I'm there to win, and that's my goal. I want him to know, when he sees me, that I'm there to win. AJ's never been hit as hard as I'm gonna hit him. He's gonna feel a slap that he's never had. He's been great against some great competitors, but no one looks my power. And when he looks me in the eyes, when we start that match, he's gonna understand. If AJ's not concerned with me, that's the biggest mistake he can do. I'm gonna humble him real quick when he understands how hard I can hit. Protein pop or hip hop with Kudo today at kudostacks.com. Here is AJ Static. His three and one with three knockouts. And what stands out the most about him, Charlie, is the neck strength, the most powerful neck in the house. Yeah, there's a lot of things that stand out about AJ Hicks, but let's talk about his neck strength because it really is next level. And it's a strength that he attributes to his many nights spent head banging and heavy metal mosh pits. And notice that he gets this balance from skateboarding the streets of the small town in Wisconsin, like we just saw in that video leading up to this. And AJ says he realizes Vern Cathy isn't going to be a walk in the park by any means, but he says he has it all figured out. And he plans to, quote, eat Vern Slap, smile, and blow up a kick. Well, he's got no choice. He's gonna have to eat it because he lost the coin toss. Now, let's just think about the neck strength and the relevance of that. The stronger the neck, probably the better the ability. Which certainly helps to take a shot because the head doesn't move quite as much. Now, as we know, he's got the biggest. We know that Vernon hits the hardest. So, Dan, will he be the first ever person not to go to sleep? We will find out tonight's social media post brought to you by Happy Dad, a hard seltzer, no more skinny cans. He said his goal is to win and ride that electric skateboard down the strip with the championship belt on. I can see him doing that if that were to come to fruition. But he will have to do it from the underdog status. A plus 200 dog. Kathy coming in as the minus 260 favorite. And Kathy will once again be slapping first. Striking! 
ring, out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 264 and one half pounds. Out of Adams, Wisconsin, AJ Static Higgins. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 204 pounds. Out of Gypsum, Kansas, Vernon, the mechanic, Kathy. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Jason Herzog. The winner of the coin toss and striking first, Vernon Cathy. All right. We are uh, anxiously awaiting this one with bated breath. All Vernon has done is knock okay, Ray, people out. AJ's toss. been never, has I'll never been knocked out. Look at that neck strength, strongest in the house right by far. On three. By and that's the storyline here. here. Will oh, AJ be right the first on three. and only on three. man three. to take one of the right shots from three. Vernon Cathy and stay conscious? You ready? One, two. Oh, oh my God! He's getting up. He's up. Four, He's wobbled. Five. Will he be the first? Six. He's still wobbled. Seven, He's trying hard. He's eight, trying to compose himself. He's himself. He's good. The fighter's good. He's good. Wow. Recovered. Now, here's the thing. Vernon yeah, Cathy's never been out. hit, so time, this is going to be a first. Seconds. If you give it, you, you have to take it. Go no Vernon Cathy. Yeah, you got time? It's right there. Into the box, please, Let's take sir. a look at this. Right here. Oof. Clean. Are you ready? And just like he told us, dragging the what fingers along the count? face, too. Right Almost right ripping the ears two. off. You have 18 right. seconds. This is a first. Right We've never two. seen this before. Feet in the box. Feet in the box. Oh, 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 oh. Right on two. Nobody's right. ever survived a Cathy right slap. Right on two. One. Oh! oh he's down! He's down! Slapped and slid! Oh! I don't think he's getting it. Oh, oh, it's over! It's over! It's over! AJ hits with the upset! Oh my god! The first to take the shot! The first to land the shot! The first person to beat Vernon Cathay! He did the impossible! He fucking did it! AJ hits. The entire building is on their feet. Nobody saw that coming. He survived the Kathy slap and came back to deliver a knockout of his own. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the Beast. Unleash the Beast is right because that is the way AJ Hintz hits. Look at that. Look at that. Slept him straight away. You can see from the posture of Vernon Kathy the way he was. Falling down to the canvas, head down. Vernon Cathy looks like he was on, I don't know, I don't know. Trying to get back to his feet. Look at this, falls over again. I mean, the wrist bending backwards. There down. was no chance he was getting up after that. Ugh. You want to listen to it? Let's listen to it, Bisbee. Yeah, let's listen. Right on two. One. Oh. Oh. Sickening. I mean, so that was... You, you know what else is interesting? I don't know if you remember Vernon telling us that he put all his weight on the lead side. His foot was picked up. Yeah, I don't know if that's interesting. I'm just still shocked. <laughs> I am too. Look at the fan reaction here. Look at that. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, wow. The boss man's reaction. Breaking Dana. I mean, I like Vernon Cathy. I do too. He's a but very likable good, guy. He is a very likable guy. But we didn't guy. know what we were getting because he'd never been slapped before. All right, the time for the strength. official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Justin Bernard, our power slap announcer. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 seconds, Arius the Destroyer and Ron Wolverine Beta have waited patiently as their fighters went through the paces, but now it is their turn. A rematch for the heavyweight title. It's really unbelievable how far all of this has come. You know, I believe that I'm one of the pioneers of the sport. If there ever was a Mount Rushmore, I'd be one of those faces. You know, just thinking about that belt, the very first world heavyweight champion of power slam just means everything to me. I know 
nothing's gonna stop me into getting that belt. What I enjoy about the sport is uh, the competitiveness. The will of somebody to get hit and then come back. No, come on, stay up, stay up. The will to keep going, just, you know, keep pushing for what you want. And I really want that belt. So for the coaches, we brought in the two best guys in the world for the first ever heavyweight slap championship. Darius the Destroyer is a heavyweight champion from Missouri, and this dude has never lost a fight, and he's only 22 years old. He's an absolute beast. He's got unbelievable, brutal knockout power. Ooh, that was crisp. I call it reaching into the depths of hell. I bring it down low, grab the fiery pits of hell, smack it across that person's face. My style is torturous for my opponents. Every fight I go out there to try to finish my opponent, I don't ever try to leave anything up to the judge's decision. I am very prepared to be facing the best Wolverine you've ever seen. So the Wolverine's name is Ron, and he's a former MMA fighter turned slap fighter. This guy's got incredible power and toughness. He's only 31 years old, and he's got a record of 11 and three, and his only losses yeah. have been to the Destroyer. Their most recent fight was an epic 27-rounder, and it's considered by most people the greatest slap fight ever in history. The doctor, due to safety, you know, he just he had to call it, and I didn't like that I lost, but I got no quit. I ain't been backed up or put down yet. Me and Darius both know that we got five rounds to leave it all out there. That's what we're going to do. This rivalry is the greatest in slapping history. We're the two legends in, the, in this game. We're both not going to quit. I mean, we're both going to look for the knockout. He's going to get the best version of myself that I've ever been, and I expect the same from him. Anybody that likes slap fighting is gonna gonna enjoy every second of it. God's Clyde. Arkansas, where he is from, delivers lumber for a living, has those hands all nice and hard. He only has three losses in his entire slapping career. All of those have been to Darius the Destroyer. Yeah, that's right. He is truly the nemesis of the Wolverine, Darius the Destroyer. As you said, started doing this in 2019, so four years experience. 11 and 3, all losses to Darius, but this time it could be different because he's bumped up, he's got heavier, he's put on 25 pounds of muscle and just girth, you know, and that extra weight is definitely going to add to the power. And he thinks he's going to shock Darius, he thinks Darius knows he can take my shot, but that's the old me, the new me is hitting way harder. Prior to this, he was a mixed martial artist. 30 fights on his record, 15 and 15. Lots of combat experience, truly loves this. Three kids at home and rocking those cowboy boots. Look at that. So those down. this is a staple for him. He's worn that in all his previous fights. I didn't know if he was gonna be allowed to do it, power slap, but they're letting him make his mark with the boots. I'd say it's a lot better than wearing no shoes, I can tell you that much.
Darius the Destroyer, just 23 years old out of Kirbyville, Missouri, population 200, and all he does is wreck shop. 17 and 0. He's never lost in a force of slap fighter. Slap fighter by night, landscaper by day. And this man was truly built for this. He said, listen, I have been struck, slapped over 150 times, and I have never, ever stumbled. He said, I've got the best chin in the game. Started doing this three years ago when he was 19 years old. One of the local bars, they were having a slap contest, but he's not 21. So he sneaked in, got a fake ID, won the competition, went home with $2,000 and got a free tattoo. That was his entry into this sport, and that is where he realized that he had a real talent for this. And listen, he wants to be the best in the world, not only at slaps, MMA, BJJ. He really does have lofty goals, sets his sights and his targets high, but he's got a very, very tough opponent tonight. When I asked him about Wolverine, he said he's tough, it's all been close, and he's doing the no-shoe thing as well. I don't like the no-shoes. Mistake. Not a good idea. I mean, I don't know. I'd rather have no shoes on than no boots. They're not my cup of tea. But, you know, the so, so neither one of your cup of tea. You don't like the shit kickers or no shoes for this. The shit kickers. I'd wear those shit kickers if it means I win the fight because you slip on the canvas. Uh, interesting. Well, two opposite ends of the spectrum as Wolverine and Darius the Destroyer are set to face off for a fourth time in four years. The Tale of the Tape brought to you by 10X, 10X Your Business, 10X Your Income, 10X Your Life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. Nine years older is Wolverine. They're both 6'1", and it is a three-inch reach advantage. Wolverine told us He's never been knocked down or backed up. And that includes those three fights with Darius the Destroyer. That's how close it's been. Let's send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Anthony A. Marnell III and Executive Director Jeff Mullen. Our judges stage side are Mike Bell, Sal Diamato, and Junichiro Camillo. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now about to witness the main event of the evening. To the sold out Apex Arena and those watching around the world, brace yourselves for impact. The power is on. Introducing first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, one inches tall, weighing in at 224 and one half pounds. Out of Mountain Home, Arkansas, Ron, the Wolverine Beta. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet, one inches tall, weighing in at 260 pounds. Out of Branson, Missouri, Darius the Destroyer, Matavarona. Your winner of the coin toss and striking first is Darius the Destroyer, Matavarona. Wait for me, wait for me, wait for me. All right, gentlemen, to the center. Mark Smith taking charge. Again, he worked the UFC event tonight yeah. as Defense well. Look at the difference here. We got cowboy right, boots and no shoes. Darius the Destroyer's right, never Darius, lost a perfect 17 and 0. Right, Wolverine's hand, never lost three. to anybody besides right Darius. Yeah, they have a lot of history together. I'm not expecting One. a first round knockout, but you never know. Two. Three. Well, I, will, I will tell you this. Wolverine said he's never been backed up. He got backed up a little bit there. Backed up a little scooch. Recover. All right, but now this will be interesting. Right hand on three. Measure. That's a quick recover. He has a waist wind up, And he's heavier. Oh my God! Ridiculous! 
redemption is good. Almost Come to me. Come to me. Life. 25 pounds heavier, wearing the shit kickers, representing the people of Arkansas. One and done, gets revenge, sits down, Darius the Destroyer, and look at the emotion. The heavyweight title going back to Mountain Home, Arkansas. Wow. I mean, he's 0-3. Well, he was until tonight. Incredible. Darius. We talked over and over about how much bigger and stronger he was, and it proved to be the difference. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. I mean, that's shocking. In over 150 slaps, Darius has never been wobbled, never dropped, never hurt, never phased. One shot tonight from the Wolverine, and that was it. And there's Darius walking out now, very upset, very frustrated, shaking his head, pissed off. Massive opportunity, beating him three times, but on the biggest stage, didn't get the job done. And the first heavyweight champion in power slap history. I'm not going to say that I didn't expect Wolverine to win. I just didn't expect it to end in the first round because these have all been yep. wars. Just goes to show that extra 25 pounds, the extra weight converts to power. That makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. And for the first time, Wolverine weighed in at 224 pounds, the heaviest he's ever been. And look at that smile. That's not leaving his face. And the shoes, the boots, it gives you more traction. Well, it gives you more traction than no feet. Darius has already left. Not it is time for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks. Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. And this is presented by Rumble. Ladies and gentlemen, after 21 seconds in round number one, referee Mark Smith calls a stop to the match for the winner by TKO and new power slap heavyweight champion of the world, Ron the Wolverine Beta. And the Wolverine wearing his boots and all, the heavyweight strap around his belt makes history here in Las Vegas, beating the best slap fighter in the world for the first time in four tries. All four of our championship fights ended in the first round and perhaps none more surprising.